Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Pattern Realm, Jimmy Hendrick here. Your success and confidence uh, coach. Today, I'm going to talk to you about this question. Does God want us to have abundance? Now, these are the parameters that I give. I'll give you my own conclusions, but I expect those who consume my content to uh, answer these questions on your own for yourself. Okay? Now, here's the thing. The number one, the yes, no toggle switch does not work here. Okay? You can't say absolutely yes and absolutely not. No. It's not going to work with me. I, I want my rich dad said Robert Kiyosaki I want you to use your head okay use your head number two it depends that don't work what it boils down to the answer boils down to this equation meets times K equals motivation okay now let me give you a sign where God does want us to have abundance. Okay? Jesus said this in uh, John 10.10. 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal or to kill or to destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Okay? He wants us to have abundance. It's a thief that wants us to be, you know, pretty much in, in poverty. And I can hear some of you that are, are of my faith saying, well, no, 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 give me, give me, give me, you're, you're dead wrong. Well, we have a right to have a difference of opinion. Okay? But, and here's the flip side. It's a major flip side. Jesus said also in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay, that's a non-negotiable. How do I know it's a non-negotiable? Because it's a higher law. Anything that Jesus preaches on in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5 through 7, that is part of his absolute higher law, and we must obey it. Okay, it's kind of like what I've been seeing on social media and really what I'm observing in the, in the world reverence for the institution of marriage is going out the window. There's movies and stuff that have been flaunted and put up here on, on social media saying, well, he married the guy because they have a trust fund. But family says the guy's got to throw her out because you know, it's a money situation. Or, well, the guy's, the guy's uh, blinded in a wheelchair. But I'll marry him because he has money. Or here's another one that's even more pathetic. That I've seen advertised. This couple's in big beds, and the husband says, Our marriage lasts only as long as my grandfather is, is, is alive. Once he dies, this house is mine, and our marriage is null and void. Let me tell you something. Because of stuff like that that happened in my in my uh, first marriage, and I've only been married once. Because of that, yeah, that that makes me sick. Attitudes like that make me sick. In the Book of Mormon, let me let me get this. Book of Mormon, Jacob chapter two, verse eighteen and nineteen. 
But before ye seek for riches, seek first the kingdom of God. And after that ye have sought the kingdom of God, you shall have riches and you shall seek them. And you shall seek them to do good. The only reason why I want to be wealthy is to bless the lives of the people around me. I'm not going to sit around like some, some greedy ogre. And I know I talk about I talk about her a lot. Uh, mi amor, Blanca. See, I was become wealthy. There is no way in my own life I would I would I would uh, I would ditch her because I love her. The minute that marriage or any other ordinance of the Lord becomes transactional, transactional, it's cheapened. And it's degenerate culture. You look at Alma chapter 31. Alma prays because he's freed because a certain civilization in the Americas. In the Book of Mormon, they pretend to worship God, but the thing is their goal. Reverence goes out the window. God wants you to give abundance but he wants you to reverence him first. Okay, Any, listen to me. Anytime that you reverence and count town to and grovel to the golden calf of money, it's your idol. And God is displeased. Okay? I'm not against the, the, gospel, the prosperity gospel per se. What I am part of the problem with is, you know, God loves you so you, you have to be rich. Maybe rich in, in blessings spiritual. But now temporal, you still have to work for it. You still have to hustle for it. And plus, if you think about the equation in itself, where is your motivation? Where's your motives? And number two, where is your faith? If your faith is in the golden calf of money, forget it. You're not going to get anywhere with that. Look at the civilization in, in the Book of Mormon in Alma chapter 31. The Zoramites. They were turning evil. It was only the poor that was able to see the error of their ways and turn and repent. Now, I'm not saying it's good to be poor. I'm going to tell you something. It's not. We, we should be reverencing God. We should be worshiping God. But if we keep in things by bowing down to the golden calf and throw out pure, true reverence for God out the window, then you're sunk. You're sunk. Because you need God. You need Christ. Yes, I would say he wants us to have abundance. But think about it. The underlying question to this whole thing. Where is your motives? What are you thinking? Oh, I, 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 I need money so I can uh, marry this girl and eventually, you know, just cut her out. But don't even bother to seek abundance. Because that's the degenerate culture, okay? That's Lucifer's game. Don't play that, please. Because if you worship at the shrine, at the shrine of money, power, or force, you're not welcome here in Patent Realm. Okay? Yes, I believe in making money. I talk about business. I talk about money. But the most important thing you need to know, this series is called Designing Belief in the Prize. This channel is for entrepreneurs with a faith-based mindset. And let me tell you something. I will not compromise in order to chase money. In order to ever betray mi corazón blanca as long as as we choose to remain faithful to the commandments. Okay? 
but I want you to think about it. If you answer the question with the question, the answer doesn't matter as long as I'm talking about it in a Socratic way. You have to answer the question for yourself and dig deep into yourself. That's part of personal development, which every entrepreneur should go through. I, I, want, I want you to think of that, that, okay? If you see social media telling you, well, there's a gold, golden calf, and you know, you just throw uh, reverence out the window, make your marriages uh, transactional, because if these friends can be married and for tomorrow we got die, don't buy it. It's a point where you got to stay in the earth and take a stand. Now, I hope you enjoy watching. If you like what you hear, please subscribe, become a part of Pattern Realm. This is Jimmy Hendrix saying until next time, don't just sit there and take it. With you having the right motivations, worshiping God and having a reverence for Him alone, I want you to build your dreams so you can take it. Do what others don't so you can be what others want. And do what others want so you can have what others can. Choose, act, and pursue happiness. God bless you. And remember this from the bottom of my heart, Jimmy loves you. I really, really, really love you. God bless you, and please have a blessed day.